Hello. Hi. So today we're going to be talking about uh, accessibility features in Microsoft Education Tools. And we're really going to focus today on uh, three core concepts. But the first concept, we're going to focus on Microsoft Translator. And all of the resources that you need to access throughout today will be on this bit.ly link. So it's bit.ly slash accessible Microsoft. And you can find all of the resources there. So after today, you want to go back and you want to look at all of those resources. They will be there for you. My name is Lindsay Trinowski. I am the Microsoft Learning Consultant for the Philadelphia area and really most of, of Pennsylvania and some of New Jersey as well. And really my job is to focus on uh, going into schools and uh, telling teachers and, and students and admin uh, how to use our tools to better student outcomes and to really increase accessibility within the classroom as well. So today we're going to focus on uh, lots of different accessibility features, but like I said this morning, uh, we're going to focus more on Microsoft Translator. My Twitter handle is there as well, so if you'd ever like to get in touch with me or uh, reach out, you can always do so there. Uh, so we really want to focus on just this, this general idea of you know, how can we make our tools accessible for everyone uh, in the classroom? So I don't want you to really focus on a particular student or, um, you know, a, a particular kind of grouping of students. I want you to focus on everyone that you may teach or that you may see in the classroom because uh, don't put any of these features or tools into, you know, just a specific box. I really think a lot of these tools can be used for every single student and I really think that they are can be used to empower every single student in your classroom. And I really uh, just want to focus on this quote because I think this has to do with um, kind of a lot of what we focus on when we talk about accessibility is just that no one, no student, no person should have to ask for access, that it should just be there for them. So that's what we're really going to focus on today because I think a lot of these tools and, and features are really um, you know, put into place so that those people, students, um, and what have you can actually just take those accessibility features and tools and they can use them independently. So I, I want to just scroll down and I want to actually just go ahead and get into what is Microsoft Translator. So Microsoft Translator is actually, there's, there's lots of different components here with Microsoft Translator. And um, there's a, a Translator Live feature, which uh, includes live subtitling. There's customized speech recognition. We have over 60 different languages that you can um, translate into. And then we also have personal translation and um, Q&A. So I'm actually going to get into Microsoft Translator. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to translator.microsoft.com. And you'll see here, when I first get into translator.microsoft.com, I have two different options. Now, the reason I like this website so much is because it's actually allowing me to use Microsoft Translator on any different device uh, that I may have access to. This is browser-based uh, right now, what I'm using. So I can use this no matter if I'm using Office 365 tools or what I'm using in, in the classroom. I can actually use this based on uh, any different device that I may have. So I'm going to go to where it says Start Conversation. And when I go to where it says Start Conversation, it has me go ahead and plug in my name and then my language. So I can choose here any different language that I actually want to be speaking into. So you can see all of these languages here. And I choose my language of choice. I can also choose to select I am using this product in a classroom, which is really great for your students. So think about you know students who may not speak um, English and they're in your English classroom and you actually want them to be accessing the content, right? I have a, a science teacher using this for his students in his classroom, um, and what he does at the beginning of the day is he just gives them the code. So you'll see, uh, as I enter this conversation, what happens is it actually gives me a conversation code. So the first thing that it, I see up here at the top is it says, you're the only one here, 
give other participants in this conversation the code. So it'll say the code, which is translate.it slash and then the code. Um, and then you'll also see that there's a QR code there as well. So I can have my students go ahead and take a picture of this QR code with either an iOS device or what they, what they have with them and they can access this conversation from their own personal device. I can also have them access from the web. And again, this is any web device. I have access to this translate.it code. So once I go ahead and I close this and others start to join, I will be able to see those others who are joining over here in the right-hand side. I will also be able to see their language over here in the right-hand side. Now, when I want to actually go into presenter mode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on presenter mode. And now, as I talk, this is going to show up on the screen. So for my students, whichever language they choose, they will be seeing my text, everything that I am saying in their language of choice on their screen. Now you also saw when I started the conversation that it had a few languages that were text and speech and then a few languages that are just text right now. So if they choose one of the languages that are text and speech, they will actually be able to hear this presentation in their language of choice using headphones. Uh, they will also be able to see uh, the actual presentation in their language of choice as well. Now, as I continue to talk, it will go ahead and show up on the screen. This is also really, really useful for things like back to school night, uh, parent conferences, things like that, that you have a wide audience and you're just not sure who's speaking what language. This is really helpful for that. So I can turn off presenter mode whenever I need to. This will just say, this will keep the conversation you know, stopped. So if I need to take questions or uh, if somebody's asking me something kind of off the record, if you will, uh, I can go ahead and turn off presenter mode. This also enables my audience to ask questions. And not only can they ask questions by typing, they can also go ahead and use the speech feature to ask the question in their native language using the, this uh, Microsoft Translator. So it's a really great functional tool for things that you may need in the classroom and otherwise. After I'm completely finished with my presentation and I wanna go ahead and maybe get a transcript for this presentation, I can go into the settings and I can actually get and save a transcript here. I can also do other um, you know, settings uh, options I have here, so speech output, muting, locking the conversation, all of those different things I have access to. So this is all, again, free right there for you in any browser at any moment in time. You can get to this. You can create your own conversation. And I can leave the conversation when I'm completely finished. Now that transcript will also be translated into any language that they choose, that your participants choose at the beginning of the, of the uh, presentation. So if I chose Mandarin as my language of choice, that transcript will be all in Mandarin. So they will be able to access the conference or the meeting or the back to school night uh, agenda in the language of choice. So I'm gonna go back to my sway here because I wanna just point out a few things. And this is my presentation for today. I do have a lot of different uh, information resources throughout my presentation for today that you can always get to. I also just wanna point out that we have this Translator app is a Windows 10 app that you can get on your Windows 10 device, but you can also get this app for free in your or on your mo mobile device. And over here is what it would look like if you would get this app on your mobile device. And you'll see that it has this really nifty microphone button as the biggest one. And basically what that allows you to do is to uh, speak into it in your language of choice and then choose the language of choice that you want it to output. Um, so I could 
choose from English to Mandarin, and I could be speaking in English, and it could come through the phone after I speak it in English in Mandarin. I can also use this keyboard um, option for typing a question. I can use this image option for actually taking a photo of something that may be in a, a language other than uh, my native language, and I can get it translated right there in the application. And then this option over here is the conversation code option that I just showed you in the browser. So I have all the three or uh, four of those uh, different options on here. And it's just a really great free application that you can get for free any point in time on your mobile device. Um, there's also a dialogue option with this microphone, uh, which allows you to use one device to actually speak uh, back and forth with someone using just that one device. So I always use the example, you see a, a parent in the hallway and that parent comes up and wants to ask you questions, but maybe they don't speak your native language. You can quick pull out your phone and say, hold on just a second, let me pull up my translator app and let's have this conversation back and forth so that we're being more accurate in our communication other than just the, you know, um, maybe gestures or, or trying to figure it out in other ways. So this is a really great application and option for that inclusive communication within your classroom. I also have a video here, and this video is going to actually show you present, presentation translator. I want to actually just demo that just quickly for you. So what you have in, Pow, uh, in PowerPoint, and this is built into PowerPoint Online and also PowerPoint in the desktop, is actually in your slideshow feature, you have the ability to use subtitles. So this option here that says always use subtitles, I can go ahead and turn that on and I can then choose the language of, of choice. So I can say my spoken language is English and I would like the subtitle language to be in and then here is where you get to choose the language of your audience. So if you're talking to an audience with um, you know, a wide uh, maybe Spanish population or I'll go back to that Mandarin example, um, you can choose those different languages and have those projected up on the screen for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose French and I'm gonna go ahead into presenter view of my PowerPoint here. And as soon as I do that, you can see at the bottom, it says starting subtitles. And as I'm speaking in English, it is now showing up in French for my audience. So this is a really great way to bring that inclusive communication right into your PowerPoint presentation. It's really great for students to be able to know this as well, because I think that it's a, you know, a powerful tool for them to be aware of as they move forward um, in the world and you know maybe in uh, colleges, trade schools, universities, they may want to use something like this. So this is a really great tool for them as well. Um, that's all for Microsoft Translator. Again, I really hope that you, uh, you know, go ahead and download the free application on your phone to get started with it. Translator.microsoft.com will take you right into the Translator application um, and you can start using it from there. Thanks so much.